important to me that I pick the piece of driftwood that comes from the lake that's here near my home because I, I find uh, this area very special. I grew up across the, the lake basically in Buffalo my, my, most of my life and building a home over here in Ontario I always uh, would select a lot of my driftwood from that same lake, Lake Erie. A lot of times uh, the driftwood could come as far away as Cleveland or Erie, Pennsylvania and it's the power of the, the Niagara Falls that kind of creates a current that brings a lot of unique pieces that have taken uh, probably long journeys, each of these pieces that washes up on the shores and on the rocks. And so that's when I usually go down and, and select pieces that I'd like to um, work with. But when I select a piece and bring it into my studio and decide to um, use a little imagination and try to transform a piece of driftwood or any other object that I find, it's almost like I'm giving it value. And by turning it into a, a piece of artwork and investing a little imagination and burning into it with the fire art, I feel like um, it's an example of that transformation that I like to feel I can do it myself. So this is the piece of driftwood that I selected down at the lake. And what I want to do here today is actually start burning onto this driftwood and creating a piece of artwork like I would normally do whenever I do the wood burning activity. What I like about the driftwood is it's very unique and it has a story behind it almost like um, people. The journey that this driftwood might have taken on the lake kind of uh, is similar to how the journeys that we take as, as individuals. And as you can see, this is a very unique piece of uh, driftwood with the shapes. A lot of times there's patterns in the wood and it might be banged up and have nicks and uh, imperfections in the wood, but that's kind of um, What's nice about that is it's kind of like how people have uh, parts of them that aren't always perfect and it's kind of we can almost identify with that wood and that's uh, an important part of um, fire art, at least for me, because I find that um, we can almost put ourselves into that material and it's almost like a psychology that when you're working on it, it you, can, uh, you can almost um, transform that piece and you can almost transform parts of yourself at the same time. A lot of times we do a lot of uh, fire art workshops. We do a lot of workshops with high schools. Is, is that's what we're doing right now. We do a lot of workshops with universities. Sometimes we're working with um, groups that are in more of a healing uh, situation or a healing setting, like uh, hospitals or, or different types of uh, institutions like that. I've been doing this program with Earl for about five years now. Uh, we go into the school systems and uh, teach the students the wood burning. It seems uh, they really enjoy doing it. Um, you get a lot out of it just uh, with them. You get to, you know, a better understanding of what they're going through in life, uh, what's happening in school, what's happening at home, and they seem to be, all of them actually, really relieved after they've done this project. Uh, you really find that kids come back from their lunch break and they're supposed to be all wired and, and rowdy and uh, you know they sit down with their piece of wood and the burner and they start getting at their design and there's just like a, a very calm um, and relaxed manner they all of a sudden have and they're etching out their design and they're, they're going over whatever they chose and uh, you really, uh, really get a sense of they're focused and they're there and you have them. Uh, they, they use it as a tool for them um, to, bring, to bring enjoyment into their life. They also use it as a uh, healing tool. 
there's been uh, several students that have lost either grandparents or aunts or uncles or family members and it seems like when we come in this has just happened the week or so before and then they start burning and uh, you know putting all this into their work because as you're burning really it kind of smokes and it goes up so it's like a prayer as well while they're doing this they're, they're getting all these uh, good memories and good thoughts out and it's like a little bit of a relief for them and it does as they're burning they're thinking these good thoughts positive things most of the time sometimes not so good but in a way it's all going up just like you do when you do your smudging so they, they seem to be really relaxed uh, they seem to find themselves a little more um, they'll sit down and they'll talk to you and they'll, they'll let you know what they're doing you know in the story of what's going on in their life where a lot of the times the teachers say they had no idea I think it gets a really good response. A lot of the students, when they're choosing their design, uh, they'll choose stuff that is representative of their native heritage, which is nice. And it's uh, really pushed to have it be their project, something that they've created, something that they, uh, they want to work on. But you have Earl there in the classroom at the same time, you know, helping them if they want to add some detail to the face, or they want to make you know, this, the animal that they're etching out, the eyes really pop. He's there with like, the expertise to, to make that work for them. Because everyone in my class was a first time burner and you know, struggling with the process. You know, so it's, and it's, it's good to know that you went in there and you made a difference. And usually every class you work with, there's always at least four to five kids that will come up and thank you, if not more, and let you know that you have made a difference for them. And they really appreciate the fact that we did come in and do this program with them. We were given the um, responsibility of creating our first Aboriginal day here at FES. And Ms. Gazzola had heard of Kim and Earl and said they were great and they did this wood burning at the center and they had their own wood burners and would travel to where you were and put on a workshop for the kids. The wood burning was always at every Aboriginal day. There's a, like the first two years there were three to five workshops and then last year there were ten. But every single time the wood burning would be the one that would fill the fastest, so the kids really enjoy it. Um, I've had to turn kids away every time. With teaching the Native Studies credit, it really helped with uh, bringing the course alive, but as well if, you're, uh, if it would be an art class as well, their, their guidance is really helpful and the students really uh, respond to their, uh, their instruction and, and uh, it's really fulfilling, I think. It's a good use of class time. Probably more importantly, it's a good break for the students um, away from the usual math and English or science. I was, however, looking to bring more of the Native Studies into both my history courses and the visual arts courses. Uh, there aren't a lot of resources that integrate that aspect of our history into the curriculum. Uh, uh, Earl had said that I would um, be pleased with the engagement of the students and that that's true. Uh, I had a high level of engagement and uh, focus maintained throughout the project and then the results were superb um, from all students. What I wanted to do was try to give the viewpoint of uh, the steps I take when I'm going through the stages of uh, creating a piece of artwork because the thing I wanted to get across with the fire art is that it's, um, it can be very personal as a, as a way of um, not only transforming the wood, but transforming ourselves. Uh, I think I learned a lot of this when I was 
rehabilitating from my spinal cord injury. It was a very severe, severe uh, spinal cord injury and it kind of um, took a lot of my abilities away. I was, uh, couldn't move from the neck down for a couple months and when you go through an experience like that you, you uh, have all your abilities taken away. It almost um, renders you pretty helpless and it's at those times in your life that you that you're um, looking for any strengths, any abilities that you can reclaim for yourself. So this piece of driftwood that I selected from the beach, I like this piece because it did have like a knob type of a formation here on the end. And the first thing that caught my attention was the fact that it, it kind of looked somewhat like a owl-like shape. So I figured that was something to go, to go with that, that I could use. I know the rest of it kind of looks almost log-like, but it's this knob on the end that kind of makes it very uh, distinct, very different. So those are the things I want to kind of um, focus on is the things that really make it much different than other pieces of driftwood logs. So that's my my um, way of when I approach these logs to work on them or any piece of driftwood is I, I look at the coloring that's in the wood. I like to look at all the subtle striations and little little um, patterns that you see right into in the surface of the wood. Those are the things I, I, I try to look for to see what kind of designs I can come up with. Usually what I start off doing is penciling in the story that I want that particular wood to tell. Before I start to work on this piece of driftwood, I first start to pencil in some ideas. I, I come to the images that I want to put on this wood by looking at the shapes and the bumps and anything that I see in the wood that kind of gives me an idea. So that should just about be enough to at least get me started. A lot of times I don't need to put the whole finished story onto the wood all at once. All I need is a starting point on my wood that I'm going to work on. And as I'm burning along, I'm, I count on the ideas that kind of come to me as I am involved with the burning process. So right about now, I'm ready to start burning on my driftwood.
I think the kids have really got a lot of positive self-esteem from it because when we're burning at the beginning they always say I can't do this I'm not artistic I can't I can't do this at all I don't know how to draw don't get discouraged if you make a mistake or because it's you can fix it pretty quick and you find it you can wood burn over things or change your picture or whatever so just not get discouraged and just enjoy it This is an opportunity uh, for a student to um, express themselves and their identity, but with a medium that is very uh, relaxing and um, an atmosphere that Kim and Earl provide um, that helps a student to be very reflective and focused um, on whatever the task is. Once they get to see that they can do it, I think it really builds their self-esteem and it's a nice quiet atmosphere so as the days go on everybody's relaxed and joking and talking and really comfortable. It's kind of like, um, I guess, you know, sort of has the effect that the smudge has in that it relaxes you and, and just puts you at ease and you're not in such a hurry, hurry, hurry all the time. What you start out with, wood burning, is usually very different from what you end up with. So the idea that you sort of start with is you can change it and it goes with your mood. And they come back time and time again with the same uh, drive. Um, they get a finished product that's expressive, um, that they're proud of, uh, that has not only probably helped improve some of their mobility and, and their skill, but has also boosted their confidence and their self-esteem.
The thing that's nice about doing the fire art projects and the working with the fire process is that it helps to um, involve the imagination. And that's one of the things I wanted to touch on is why working with fire and art helps to um, bring out the imagination of the individual and also how this is uh, very important in, in uh, ourselves and our daily lives to uh, help uh, eliminate some of that stress, some of those unwanted emotional uh, feelings that we carry around. Sometimes working with a, a phenomenon like fire, we are able to actually burn away or eliminate some of those unwanted uh, feelings, those unwanted concerns. And sometimes it can even uh, be other things that we want to bring into our lives as well. Uh, and these are strategies that I would like to uh, show today as we uh, work some more onto this piece of driftwood. I outlined a little bit more on this uh, bulbous shape at the end of this log. I want to uh, make it into an owl form. So I have started already to uh, burn away some of the unwanted wood and started to actually shape the knob into more of an owl-like form using the fire. And I'm also going to uh, be leaving the beauty of the driftwood to, to still um, be a part of the, the completed piece. <laughs> A lot of the kids that are otherwise really quiet will talk after a, a little bit wood burning kind of brings out their personalities a little bit more. It's a much more comfortable thing than sitting in a classroom learning a lesson or something, you know, because they have complete freedom. Um, I find it's really calming and uh, just that through with the wood burning you're destroying a piece but you can get a piece of beauty through the destruction of it all. I find that very interesting. It's like a time where you can escape and just focus on your burning and that's it. It's calm, it's relaxing, you just get to sit back and chill out. Uh, an inner peace that you feel when you're doing it because it's just you don't have nothing else you have to deal with at the time. I like the way it makes me feel. I feel relaxed and comfortable. 
I've learned to uh, trust my instincts and just go with the flow, pretty much. I've already been asked about 20 times this semester, when are we doing the wood burning? When are we doing... And I think that a lot of the kids that otherwise don't always find school to be their favorite place can come and it's such a unique thing to experience in a class and then say wow that is really cool and come and hope for more activities similar to it that draw them into the school. I think attendance for sure it helps attendance because they want to come to school because they want to finish their project or see what's going on or sit amidst their peers and listen to the stories and have everyone be relaxed and you know so I think it definitely is a positive having a positive impact on Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal students. Kim and Earl are very supportive and encouraging um, at any sort of roadblock or little kind of obstacle that uh, would normally put a halt to things, would normally have students shut down or turn off. Um, with a little bit of guidance or a little bit of encouragement, they're helped over the hump and um, it takes really very little direction. It's just more encouragement to get through it and to complete something that um, that uh, that truly is a confidence booster. That that helps with the self-esteem and it's it, it later carries on. It it, um, it follows them for the next project and and hopefully outside of this classroom. Sometimes when I'm working on an art piece, the, there'll be stories kind of rolling around in my head as I'm working on the piece. And oftentimes um, these uh, stories, or sometimes they can even be poems, kind of 
play around to the point where I have to write write them down. And a lot of times I like to read these these stories or sometimes these poems to um, explain you know the things that are that are in the the piece themselves. A lot of times the fire and the flame can um, can be associated to the the whole process of writing. You know, words and images can go together quite nicely. Midwinter Dream. There is a moon that appears in the new year, a round, bright face of unspoken wisdom. Light beams dance on the frozen veil of night. In a great house of wood, a ceremony glows, a celebration for the mystery of nature. We rejoice for all that keeps us young. There comes a special kind of new moon, a mystic light whose shadow runs with the wolves. In a house of fire, the stories are told. Beneath a midwinter moon, we dream. The unseen magic of the world awakens, and songs can be heard across the threshold of time. Healing Crow Woman. She moves across the shifting shapes on the wings of an eagle. Her robe of linen cloud sweep the misty mountain sky. Crow Woman's gifts held close to the heart of a morning sun. Healing spirits arise on the ancient tracks of bear. From the darkness, From the she, darkness, brings new light. The darkness she brings new light. Yeah, a lot of the artworks that I, that I do are, are a little bit kind of in a more of a dream dream type of uh, artwork where there's really no definite meaning. It's always left open to the person that's viewing it. And sometimes I, I like the uh, poems to be the same way. They can be interpretive to the person that's that's hearing them. They might be a little bit more something that might be thought of as, as like a dream or they might be thought of as uh, the images themselves uh, telling a story. I try not to uh, pin myself down with any one certain meaning. I just think things are, are nice to be kept open and have a little uh, mysterious side to them. Right here we have the what I call the Woodland Visions Fire Art Center and the idea for this um, location was to have uh, a section of the of the shop that can be devoted for uh, a classroom, that can be a place where people can come in for whatever whatever needs they, they may have. Um, I wanted to work with special needs students. I wanted to work with retired people, seniors, um, anybody who wants to come in. Uh, I wanted to have um, a place, or let's just say, a space that was intimate, and a, and a space that I could allow the real magic of art to kind of come out. And at the same time, I have a section of the shop because it's large enough that I can also have um, kind of an art gallery uh, gift shop type area where people can see unique things that are handmade and also learn a little bit about the items that they're, they're possibly going to purchase. They can find out a little bit more about native culture. They can learn about some of the amazing artists that we have right here in the Niagara region, you know, that we have right here in. Um, in our section of the country, I think, I think our section of the country is, is quite rich. I'm glad to uh, be a part of it with, with the Woodland Visions Fire Art Center.
Well, right here I, I have that piece of log that I, was, I started working on a while back, and I, I did bring out as many of the parts of the log that I felt could kind of go together as a story. On the one end of the log is, uh, is the big owl form and I, I show like an owl kind of grabbing a small, maybe a mouse-like creature in his claws. The other end, there's a person uh, sleeping with the wolves who is dreaming and uh, the person that's dreaming with the wolves, it kind of tells a story of uh, the owl and uh, of his dream. And there's no color on this side. I wanted the, the field to be kind of um, shadowy, a little bit kind of um, solemn. But on the other side, I, I put a little more color in, almost like the, a Wizard of Oz type thing where it goes from black and white into uh, the more colorful world of, uh, of dream imagery. We come into this world as children who discover the gifts of nature. The water, trees, and the sun that shines on all living things are part of a sacred mystery. It is in these unknown places that the Great Spirit teaches us. It is our inner fire that lights the way for others.